House of Believes is a novel by Mark Z. Danielewski published in the year 2000. It's a meta-narrative and a story within a story within a story that is focused primarily on how we discuss and analyze visual media. For those of you who have had House of Leaves recommended to you by someone passionate about it, I'm sure the conversation began something like this. This isn't like a normal book. It's not like a normal book. Wow, it's different. I can't help but feel like House of Leaves is the pick me book. You know, it's it's the I'm not like other books of books. Over the years, House of Leaves has built up a really interesting cult following and from what I can tell a claim for this book was generally universal upon its publication. I want to lay this all out because I want to discuss what I think works and doesn't work in this book before I get into why I think it's so revered especially online today. But first a quick word from our sponsor Wraithmark. The Sword of Kaigen is a fantasy novel that's exploded in the indie fantasy space. Fantastic book and SFBO winner. And even better Wraithmark has launched a Kickstarter for a special edition of this book. This is a beautiful book with high quality offset printing, cloth wrapped hardcover and foil stamped case, embossed dust jacket, a custom full color print end sheet illustration by Felix Ortiz, a custom full color map, silver foiled page edges, custom interior design. This Kickstarter started at the start of this month, November, and has done insanely well. Not only are you getting a fantastic book and a, a, in a beautiful edition, but you're supporting a really awesome indie publishing company. Every book also comes with a custom signed silver foil bookmark. As an example of what Wraithmark puts into their published books, here's just a beautiful copy of one of their books and a gorgeous leather bound copy of A Mark of Kings. I mean, this is really like high quality stuff that they produce. But here it is, Kickstarter, a sort of Kaigen. Don't miss out on this while it's here. Please click on the custom link below. It'll take you to the Kickstarter. All right, back to the video. The book consists of several layers. So at the top level, we have us reading House of Leaves. At the next level, we have the editors who are kind of this invisible force. And then we have Johnny Truen. He is a character who is constantly intruding into the narrative, which I will get into later. But at the heart of it, and what I think most people come away with, and what I think is the best and most interesting part of this, is a story about a family that live in a house that is creepy. It's a creepy, it's a creepy house. And you all know what the back rooms is. It's, it's like a creepy pasta online. Endless space that's like a labyrinth and there's a monster existing in it. That's basically the house at the center of House of Leaves. Recently I made a video talking about why I think A Little Life is so popular today. In a way, both books are more interesting to read about than read themselves. For instance, A Little Life has this whole YouTube genre of people crying while reading it. House of Leaves has spawned so many online interpretations, rabbit holes. I mean, ever since it's been published, it has so many forums and dedicated fan sites. I'm not gonna deny, House of Leaves is an interesting book. I think this book is offering many different things and throwing everything at the wall. People can come away with satire, with horror, with romance. Part of it, I think it's just a structurally playful book. It's an experiment. Many of the characters are one dimensional in this book. I thought that the female characters were especially poorly written. It felt like it was touching on a lot of different topics on the surface, but the center was hollow. The problem with really dense and complex art, and especially ironic and postmodern art, is that you can kind of get away with doing things poorly by saying, well, that's the point. There's a lot of blatant and overt sexism. Defenders of this book can say, well, that's the point. It's a comment on that. Oh, this book is becoming incredibly boring and obnoxious and going into tedious academic details. Well, that's the point. It's supposed to frustrate you. So much of this book's flaws you can support by saying, well, that's that's intentional. Johnny Truen and Zampano are two of the most obnoxious narrators, but also the most obnoxious writers. And there is some pretentious writing in this book that is played, I think, to be like the point. It's like that one kid in like your high school creative writing class who only reads Bukowski and Jack Kerouac trying to sound really edgy. You're just reading over and over and over again really poorly written sex scenes that are so objectifying of women in such a gross, sometimes violent way. John Johnny Truant is so much of this book. He's like this anchor character. Once that point has been made, it's just like a joke that overstays its welcome. A major reason why I think this book is so popular today, especially with young people and people who are extremely online, is that it is mostly a visual graphic work. It's really not so much a novel as it is an art piece. A book like this is kind of all consuming and in a way it kind of patterns how we process and interact with the internet where we're not just on one linear course through our interests, through what we're engaging with. We have multiple tabs open. We're reading about different stories from different perspectives. You know, we go through a Twitter thread and then watch a YouTube video about it. There's a bunch of different narratives coalescing and I think that's what makes this book interesting, how it is 
kind of like a major book dealing with the internet. A lot of it feels, and I hate to use this word, but gimmicky. Only the most dedicated people can actually get through it, which is again why I think it's more interesting to read about this book than to actually read it, because the actual process of reading it can be intensely frustrating. At the end of the day, it's about how much you're willing to put into this book and how much you want to get back. And the problem was I was putting my full effort into this book at first until I realized that I'm not getting anything in return. The author is clearly trying to write very vivid, real characters, but I feel like they're just stock characters. There's nothing unique, especially the female characters. At the heart of it, there wasn't much there besides like a pretty, pretty creepy short story. And there are some creepy moments, yeah. Why this works fundamentally, why people love this book so much, ultimately is because there is a nice story at the heart of it. There's a good, creepy story at the heart of it that is engaging. It's not engaging enough for 700 pages, but it is engaging. I don't think you can just get by with the gimmicks. I don't think you can just get by with experimenting with the structure and the style. I think that there has to be more for people to returning to reading, for people to be engaging with reading. And anyways, let me know what other books you think are interesting to discuss or do a deep dive on. Thank you again to Wraithmarked, and please go check out the Kickstarter. The link is in the description. Yeah, thank you for watching. Have a good one.